Welcome to Build the Weight Loss Practice of Your Dreams. I'm your host, Carol Clark, and I am going to be going over 16 important lessons that I wish we knew when beginning our weight loss practice. I'm actually going to divide this into two podcasts, so we only cover eight each week. So this will be the first eight, and then next week will be the second eight. They're not really in a particular order, but these are things that are valuable lessons for sure. As many of you know, I am here in Virginia, and I'm married to Dr. Tom Clark. He's a board certified bariatric surgeon and also obesity medicine specialist. He's board certified there as well. And we have worked together, like I say, for over two decades, not to sound too old here, but there are so many things that you learn as you uh, go through establishing a practice, growing a practice, selling a practice, opening a separate practice. There's so many different things that go into it. And now I have the honor of spending uh, all of my time consulting with various practitioners across the US and many are starting their practices from scratch or adding additional revenue streams into their practice. And I get to work with them on so many different projects, but there has been a lot of them lately opening brand new practices. So I thought, well, this is a great time to talk about the things that I wish I knew way back when, because they really do uh, hold true today as well. So anyhow, the first one is to definitely have a vision and don't make it too small, don't make it too big. It's your vision, so make it what it is that you want, what it is that you want to see as your practice and share that with your team, with your spouse uh, or your significant other. Make sure that you share that. Know what it is. It will change a little bit over time, but you want to make sure that you do have a vision because that's where your plan is going to come from. So that's my first one. And I think a lot of times when we start out, we just figure we have to do it like everyone else. And my second tip is actually don't do it like everyone else. Be different. I love working with practices that have everything it's so uniquely them. It's their uh, some of their branding even, but it's it's more than that. It's how they set up their services and how they provide their services, what their vibe is in their office, how their team is uh, uh, brought on and how they're hired and onboarded. There's so many different ways. So please make it your own. You will find that people are attracted to different, much more so than just being attracted to the same thing that's somewhere else uh, in your city or your surrounding area. So uh, the second one is don't, don't be afraid to be different. Uh, because when we go through school, we're often taught, you know, the standards of care, of course, but we're also kind of molded into understanding things one way. And sometimes we don't know what we don't know. And we don't realize that we can make lots of different choices that still follow the standard of care and outstanding patient care, but it's done in your own unique way. So don't be afraid. In fact, I encourage you to be different. So that's number two. The third one is to establish systems. Now, you know, I'm a systems girl. So systems Systems in my book rule. It creates uh, predictability in your practice. It creates uh, some sanity. It is something that your team needs, your patient needs, and you need. And I always talk about my main systems uh, and how everything revolves around them. The first one is your team. And then you also want to have your care coordination, how you're providing your care, your marketing, your financial system, your revenue streams, how that is all tied in together. And then of course, your tracking and reporting because uh, that's really important as well. So if you build systems, you will find you will not be waking up every day in Groundhog Day where you're recreating something over and over and over. So setting up those systems is really important. Uh, And I don't have that one in here, but maximizing the use of technology, trying to keep everything in one piece of technology if you can, but of course we use various ones, but utilizing technology to its uh, maximum potential. Uh, The fourth one is that your team is your greatest asset. We talk about this all the time, but you want to surround yourself with great people. That goes for your, you know, your attorney, your accountant, uh, your uh, office manager or your administrator, all of your team members. You want to make sure you surround yourself with the best people possible. And I know it's a struggle right now for many practices. Uh, with everything that's going on in terms of healthcare and the workforce, uh, but I'm just I'm doing a real deep dive in Bariatric Business Boss on that very topic on how to uh, attract and retain the highest talent that are 
high performing and also loyal to you and your practice and their coworkers and the patients. So anyhow, it is possible, but you do want to hire uh, the best people and surround yourself with great people because uh, your team is your greatest asset. And so that's really important. The next one is that simple gets done. I can be the queen of complicating a process, but I do know that simple gets done. So if you keep things simple for all the different systems in your practice, as simple as possible, you will see that much more will get accomplished because you don't have a lot of other things conflicting and causing some questions or uh, creating uh, more work for people. So we wanna make sure we keep things as simple as possible. So your business model, try to make it as simple as possible and it can be done. Uh, so we wanna make sure simple gets done. The sixth one is to avoid micromanaging. And I know this is hard for a lot of us with type A personalities, we first don't want to take the time to train somebody properly because we like to do it. It'll take us more time and we also want it done our way. But you can't have your cake and eat it too. When you don't, and it took me so long to learn this, but not micromanaging actually frees your team up to actually problem solve, to be creative, to offer suggestions. When you're the one micromanaging, they're afraid to offer suggestions. They're afraid they're going to be doing something wrong and you're going to be upset. So to not micromanage is really really important. Now, I know there are times when you may need to micromanage an issue or a problem that's at hand, but for the most part, when you set up those systems, you don't have to micromanage. You can actually get some of your time back so that you can focus on the most important things in your practice. And it took me a long time to learn that. The seventh one is, this is a hard one for me too, is done is better than perfect. So when I'm writing uh, educational materials for patients or I'm writing a blueprint for uh, a new practice that I'm working with, I get into the nitty gritty and I am very detail oriented and I want it to be just perfect all the time. But sometimes I have to give myself some grace and done is better than perfect. It still is a great product, but it's easier than to tweak it than to wait and then hold yourself back for so long until you actually get it out there. You create more frustration for yourself. So done is better than perfect. And my eighth one is, this is a big one that a lot of times people don't focus on, but profit over revenue. A lot of times we focus on how much money's coming in, but at the end of the day, if you don't have profitability, it's gonna be really hard to uh, reward your uh, team or yourself. It's gonna be hard to pay everything, pay your bills. It's gonna be hard to grow your practice and to save. Uh, it's gonna be really difficult. So you really do need to look at that profit. So um, at the end of the day, you do need to be looking at that. I like to look at our numbers uh, weekly at the very least monthly, look and see what the profitability is, make sure that you can see where there's issues coming up, uh, making sure that you can plan properly, uh, but profit over revenue rules every time. And of course, the biggest expenses that play into that is your uh, payroll and your overhead. So that's a lot of times where you can find some, some of the, um, the uh, issues. But anyhow, uh, that's my eighth tip. And I have eight more for you that I'm going to do in next week's podcast. But in the meantime, these are the ones that I wanted to cover today. I hope you found them helpful. I don't hope I don't sound too old since I have so many lessons that I've learned, but that's how we all grow. That's how uh, we all mature. That's how we move forward. And so those are my first eight, not in any particular order, uh, but I hope that's been helpful to you. And I will get to the next eight uh, in the next podcast. Thanks so much for listening. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you're not a member of Bariatric Business Boss, consider it or just sign up for a, uh, a free time for us to get together and talk about what's top of mind for you. Uh, BariatricBusinessBoss.com, it has all the details for membership. And of course, uh, you can always reach out to me personally, Carol, K-A-R-O-L at WeightLossPracticeBuilder.com. I look forward to all that you have going on and learning more about you and your practice. So have a great day.